थैंक यू नारायण मूर्ति जी फॉर दैट रामधुन इन योर सोनरस वॉइस एंड थैंक यू ऑल फॉर हैविंग यू नो वेंचर्ड आउट ऑन अ संडे मॉर्निंग इन स्पाइट ऑफ द प्रेजेंट कंडीशंस व्हिच आर प्रिवेलिंग इन द सिटी आई विल बिगिन दिस morning's discussion with a prayer of invocation which is a tradition you can join me with your eyes closed and a prayer of invocation is meant so that this attempt of discussion understanding contemplation becomes fruitful om ब्रह्मानं विदधाति पूर्वं यो वै वेदांश्च प्रहिणोति तस्मै तम ह देवमात्मबुद्धि प्रकाशं मुमुक्षुर वै शरणमहं प्रपद्ये ओम शान्ति 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 ओम नमो ब्रह्मादिभ्यो ब्रह्म विद्या संप्रदाय कर्तृभ्यो वंशिभ्यो महद्यो नमो गुरुभ्य सर्वोपलवरिता प्रज्ञान घन प्रत्यगर्थो ब्रह्मवाहमस्मी ब्रह्मवाहमस्मी ओ वेदाताभाषकाय गुरव शाता संयासी नानावादी नगेन्द्र संघ पवय योगींद्र वंद्याय मोहद्वांतवाकराय भगवत्दाधाम बिभ्रते तस्म भाष्य नमोस्त सतत पूर्णा बोधात्म पीपल हू हैव एन ओरिएंटेशन इन a little bit of clinical psychology i must tell that uh, you know the whole attempt is not to look at the clinical ag- aspect of anxiety but all that we recognize as stress anxiety worry at times irritation frustration all this can be grouped under this one one word anxiety presently and uh, as the topic is life without anxiety some of us already have an apprehension that there cannot be anything or anyone who's without anxiety <laughs> so a person with that kind of an apprehension already has eliminated a possibility that there can be freedom from anxiety and having done so then that person assumes that living under stress living that miserable life then is the natural way so in a way somewhere when the person has already admitted 
accepted that yes misery is something that we have to live with is is in a way not acceptable to vedanta and as the supreme teacher of the upanishad bhagwan shri krishna totally scraps this idea so in the very beginning we need to say yes there is and that positively is this possibility to find that you have you have arrived at the end of what can be called as misery there is for this is the declaration of the upanishads this is what the rishis pledge to 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 show you that you can be free from anxiety you can be free from suffering the vedic vision is not a vision which glorifies suffering we in no way worship any form of sadness you are never ever going to find whether it is ram or krishna or shiva or durga any of them with even the idols which are carved or the paintings which are made with sadness on their faces not at all even in the worst of worst kind of situations in the one which comes to my mind immediately to quote as an example is bhagwan ram who was sent away to exile in exile on the very day when he was supposed to be coronated what an anti climax and goswami tulsidas ji uses an adjective for shri ram over there saying that amlan mukham buja shri which means the luster on his face did not reduce or did not wither away even this bit this beatific smile the cheer the joy the life the spirit which was there in the eyes did not disappear anywhere it just remained the same bhagwan shri krishna demonstrates this fact all through his life what could be more unfortunate for a child for having born in a jail then separated from parents all the life persecuted by people wanting to kill the baby kill the child right from his infancy till the end and yet you do not find in shri krishna's character or the charitra the biography of shri krishna is never going to say look here the world was trying to victimize me never ever all that you remember and every poetry that has been composed on shri krishna all the poets all the poetries of ancient times as well as of present times unanimously sing about the beauty of his smile the cheer in his eyes never ever and therefore those who have an an apprehension that well <laughs> it is not possible to those people i have to tell we have living examples 
and those examples, those characters which have lit the, the, the Indian history made everything that is there, every character of the Indian history has driven their inspiration from whether it is Ram, Krishna, Shankaracharya and the list is endless and therefore the possibility that it can end in your life can never be denied. The very fact that you are born as a human being, the Upanishad says this is the main purpose. You are born as a human being not to cry, crib, get crushed and blame the world that here the world made me a victim. But you are born over there to stand against every odd and free yourself, discover yourself free from suffering altogether. Atyantika nivritti hi, dukkhasya atyantika nivritti hi. And when a person refuses to recognize this as the goal of his life, the Upanishad says that human life, that human existence was a pure waste. Mahati vinashti hi, Ken Upanishad. It is a great waste if you think that you are born as a human being only to compete, only to just to find that you are, you know, fighting over here to survive, trying to gain little, little, make little achievements. That's too small as a human being. And therefore, do not ever keep your goals of life that small. Because smaller the goals, goals don't remain small. As a result, you become small. If there is anything to be seen, achieved, done, then it is this. That is what your, mm -hmm. that is what human life can bring to you. This is what only, uh, this is what is possible only to the human intelligence that you can see the anta end of suffering brahma vidapnoti param and therefore is there anyone like that shri krishna says yes there is there is because as long as there is something to be done there is going to be some form of anxiety, isn't it? When even the smallest little thing that somebody is going to say that, well, we are going to sit over here for one long hour, but maybe I just need to go to the washroom. And even that one thing which stays on your head, that you want to go to the washroom after an hour, itself can also breed some, some form of anxiety. So as long as there is some agenda, there is going to be an anxiety and I'm not saying that there should not be, that some little amount of anxiety is good. But here is somebody who is totally free. Bhagavan Krishna says, who is such a person who no longer has any agenda? karyam vidyate. Karyam means something to be done. Karaniyam. Karyam means karaniyam, something which is which should be done. Tasya karyam na vidyate. For such a person, there is nothing more to be done. Sir, why? Is he that useless? That there is nothing for him to do? No, whatever has to be done is already done. Whatever has to be gained, attained, achieved, he already has found. 
who is such a person he says the one who delights who has discovered his own being who is centered in his own being such for such a person there is nothing more now to do to gain to go anywhere well sir then such a person such a self realized person according to you should only be sitting like a rock doing nothing because nothing to do but look at the life of ram krishna shankaracharya puja gurudev you find that every minute of their life was filled with 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 not only just action but it was in everything that was there was filled with auspiciousness there was not a single dull moment anybody who came in contact with gurudev you can ask there are several people over here even today in this congregation who have shared their their some part of life with with a teacher like that not a single moment of dullness anybody who came in contact with him that you know that energy was so infectious that even the other person would also get lit up so you cannot say that um, that the one who is who is self realized now sits like a rock doing nothing and yet shri krishna bhagwan says why why is it why is it that by his he has nothing more to do नैवतो नेह कशन न चाभूतेषु कशिदर्थव्यपाश्रय फॉर यू एंड मी वर्ल्ड इज अ प्लेस फ्रॉम वेर वी सी दैट वी हैव टू गेन समथिंग whether you want to draw money from the world recognition from the world approval from the world a husband may want to get an approval from his wife the wife may want to get an approval from her husband the children may want an approval from their parents the parents want some so it could be whatever that you want to gain from this world now for you and me the world is a place from where we look at the world as it is going to give us something or we have to gain something we have to draw something out of the world from the world the one who is now self realized centered in the self for him the world is not such a place where he looks at the world as something to gain from the world and in order to arrive at that state where now there is nothing more to be done then why do anything at all because ultimately you have to discover that there is nothing more to do then might as well give up everything and just sit over there doing nothing shri krishna bhagwan says arjuna your conclusion is wrong if you are going to look at the entire dialogue which is taking place between shri krishna and arjuna you you find almost in every chapter one common theme where arjuna says i want to give up the battle take to sanyas do nothing i want to i, I want to say quit i quit <laughs> shri 
and everywhere whenever arjuna raises this topic shri krishna says no arjuna that does not happen a lot of people have even attempted to say and i'm sorry <laughs> to hear that that you know gita is somewhere where shri krishna is trying to convince arjuna shri krishna does not have any agenda he is not trying to convince arjuna arjuna is demanding an explanation and shri krishna is providing the explanation a teacher's job is not to convince a teacher's job is only to 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 give the knowledge it could be a marketing person's job to convince shri krishna is not there to convince anyone about anything this is not a book of management the whole book is a moksha shastram it is meant to give you that what is highest in human life but any which ways when arjuna says that i i'm going to give up everything because this is how even a realized man would be because there is nothing more for him to do might as well let me follow his footsteps and shri krishna says following his footsteps is not this way to arrive at that point where you discover that you lack nothing where you discover you are complete the path goes not through not doing but goes through doing following action and doing it correctly the very fact that we are living a life of anxiety in stress which means there is something wrong there is something wrong some understanding is not sitting properly or there is some action something that needs to be done is not getting done properly and therefore there is an imbalance wherever there is going to be just as you know if we have any grain of sand which may enter our eye how restless would we become the whole your energy would be to have that grain of sand removed uh, i cannot even say well what does it matter it is a small grain of sand let it sit in your eye <laughs> you are not going to even agree to that you are going to be so restless that you want to see to it that it is removed so whenever there is something that is unnatural it makes you restless if there is this restlessness inner restlessness i'm not talking about physical restlessness where a person is con- active and running or jogging or whatever it is i'm talking about the inner restlessness that means that there is something you're living in an unnatural state there is something foreign there is something sitting there which is not supposed to be there which means perhaps something that i have understood is wrong and hence that wrong understanding that erroneous understanding is creating this state of restlessness of anxiety of of sadness of frustration whatever something is wrong over there bhagwan shri krishna says now arjuna take charge of your life shri krishna in a way is a ruthless teacher you know we we can always say oh hey krishna karuna sindho <coughs> ocean of compassion but the compassion of a teacher is in a different way 
if you are going to tell Krishna, Krishna, please come and save me. Shri Krishna is going to say, you have to do something. He is not going to allow you to say that, okay, you don't do anything. I am going to do everything for you. At the end of Bhagavad Gita, after the 11th chapter where Bhagavan already has shown his divine form to Arjuna, Arjuna could have had easily said, Now Shri Krishna, since you are Sarvashakti Paramatma, might as well fight the battle for me. And if you don't want to fight the battle, change the mind of other people. Generally, that is what we, we go to the temple with. God, you know, my daughter-in-law does not understand me properly. Just, you know, she, 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 she has a problem. Just change her mind. Hey. Arjuna does not say that, please go and convince Bhishma, Drona, Yudhish, or what is their name, Duryodhana, etc. Nor does he say that, you fight the battle for me. Do things for me. The last vachanam of Arjuna is, the last sentence of Arjuna is, Karishe vachanam tava. I will do as you have shown me. Because the teacher in the sixth chapter told, Uddhare atmanatmanam natmanam avasadayed. Arjuna, It is you who has to uplift yourself. But I thought you were going to do that. This is my way of doing it. This is my way of doing it. Lift yourself by yourself. Natmanam avasadayet. Don't destroy yourself. When you refuse to help yourself, it is not just not helping yourself, but it amounts to destroying yourself. And this is all in perfect tandem with the Upanishad. Ye ke chatma hano janaha. Those people who refuse to walk the right path of action are the people who destroy who are self-destructive is what the Upanishad says. Urvanne veha karmani jiji vishetchatagam samaha evam tvai nanya thetosti na karma lipyate nare. Asurya namate lokaha andhe natamasavrataha tanste pretya bhigachanti. Ye ke mahano janaha. Those people who are self-destructive now will be enveloped only by darkness, will be enveloped by dense ignorance. They will wriggle, they will wallow in their suffering but will never be able to swim out of it because they have refused to help themselves and therefore how does that begin here it is na karmana manarambhan naishkarmyam purushoshnute na cha sanyasana deva siddhim samadhigachati siddhi here means the accomplishment of life and where do you think your life would be accomplished by in having 10 more cars in having more villas include somewhere in switzerland and more countries how how in what way do you think your life would be accomplished we are very clear about it and we say that accomplishment of your life is in discovering that you are fulfilled. 
what you have, how much money you have, how well you are recognized, how much more are you appreciated, admired, how popular you are. These are very flimsy standards to gauge your life. Don't you ever allow these small standards ever to calculate your height. They are too small. In fact, most erroneous. Don't, don't you ever think that you will be fulfilled only when or you will find that you, you know everything in life is attained but this is my accomplishment because few people know me. That's too small. Those same few people who say they know you and respect you, in a moment's time, they will even refuse to recognize you. भाई ये तुम्हारा दोस्त है क्या? अजीर हम जानते नहीं। थे कोई ऐसे ऐसे दिखने वाले थे हमारे नेवरुन में। They will even not want to acknowledge that you are ever their friends. क्या कर क्या रहे हो? Don't make these as this this ever allow these small standards to be your to calculate. Your 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 life. Samadhika chhati. What is it that is that is going to be called as your accomplishment? Siddhi means accomplishment. जैसे हम कहते हैं, some of you do understand Hindi here? Okay, great. Doesn't matter. When we say, even in Hindi as well as in Sanskrit. That food is ready, we would say Siddha hai. Siddha hai matlab, now that rice is cooked and it is not raw, half cooked, burnt or anything, but it is just cooked good enough, just that optimum level where it can be now consumed. Siddha, that is Siddhi, accomplishment. When would you say that this is what is life? Oh, when we are holidaying somewhere in Dubai, please. Daswani ji, kya kare Dubai jaye? Ya Paris jaye. Paris jaye. Bhai tay kar lo. Jana kaha hai? Ye tum tay kar lo. जा कहां सकते हो वो हम दिखा देंगे वेर यू वॉन्ट टू लीड योर लाइफ यू कैन डिसाइड अ टीचर कैन शो यू वेर यू कैन रीच एंड वेन यू अराइव देर यू विल फाइंड अ टीचर इज वेटिंग टू एम्प्रेस यू वॉज वेटिंग ऑल द वाइल ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मेति मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमवद व्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणा मूर्तये नमः सिद्धिम समधिकच्छति ही अटेंड्स दैट अकंप्लिशमेंट दैट फुलफिलमेंट वेर नाउ ही डिस्कवर्स दैट देर इज नथिंग मोर दैट इज वांटेड बाय हिम now, when this is your state, nothing in this world can ever enslave you or blackmail you. Nothing in this world can ever make you happy. But what do they call? It's going away cannot make you sad or gaining something is not even going to increase your happiness because what you have attained is the parakashtha, the, the, the highest form of happiness, sukham, puranam, samadhi gachati, how that siddhi can be reached, samadhi gachati means properly, adhi gachati, samadhi gachati, you know, those, those who know a little bit of Gita and little bit of understanding of the scriptures, we will understand that Gachati is the word. 
adhi is a prefix so he, shri krishna could have had said gachati he was not happy he said adhigachati goes all the way adhigachati he is not even happy saying adhigachati he says samadhigachati he definitely goes there he goes all the way completely and that is what is the, what he finds as the fulfillment of life but how that fulfillment is gained shri krishna says na karmana manarambhat not without because arjuna's insistence is that let me give up everything and do nothing because doing means that it induces stress and those who are already doing it they are doing it they cannot escape it and that's why they have to do it so it's like person who is doing it no matter what position you are in you could be the prime minister or the president but you are you have to do it now why because i cannot escape it i am trapped like a mouse and that's why i have i have to i have, I have to do it i have to push myself and therefore your action your activity your interaction with the world everything just becomes a drudgery a punishment a self induced punishment न कर्मणामारंभाद श्री कृष्ण से अर्जुन नॉट बाय गिविंग अप ओके आई एम नाउ आई एम आई एम टायर्ड ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड आई वांट टू गो टू हिमालय एंड सिट ओवर देयर आई हैव कम अक्रॉस सो मेनी पीपल स्वामी जी वेर इज योर आश्रम ऋषिकेश आई एम गोइंग टू गिव अप माय जॉब एंड एवरीथिंग एंड आई शैल आई कम एंड स्टे ओवर देयर माय क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट व्हाट आर यू गोइंग टू डू देयर एंड दिस फेलो सेज यू डू नथिंग because we know i i ask what were you doing over here and he says that i have been producing problems i said you will be doing the same thing even there i <laughs> he will be only manufacturing problems settings may change it will be old wine in new bottle ha uh, kamal kya <laughs> karenge <laughs> न कर्मणामारंभाद भाई भगवान सेज अर्जुन दिस इज नॉट दी वे यू विल हैव टू निगोशिएट पैडल योर वे थ्रू दी कर्म टू अराइव एट दिस फाइनल डेस्टिनेशन बट श्री कृष्ण आई वॉन्ट आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू डू एनी थिंग आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू डू एनी थिंग and that's why i'm saying that i will give up <laughs> he says na kashchid kshanam api jatu tishthatya karma krit karyate yavash karma sarva prakriti jayer gunaihi over here even if you do not want you will be forced into some action why because that is what you your body mind etc is constructed of it is constructed of the prak gunas of the prakriti and they will force even when a person says i am going to do nothing i am doing nothing ask him what are you doing he says nothing hey, that means he is still doing he is still doing doing nothing is not called as not doing because he is still doing but what is he doing that is nothing but it is still doing he is not free from doing the only one who has freed himself from this idea of doing is the one who is realized for him there is end of suffering but you have to walk your way up to that destination and this way is also filled with joy 
it is not filled with anxiety it is filled with with shedding of anxiety as you keep walking the spiritual path and therefore i have very often said spirituality is maturity maturity of understanding spirituality is not something that is you know start experiencing strange things they come and swami ji you know we start seeing we i'm, I'm spirituality is you start seeing lights i said where are you sitting on a traffic signal you are seeing lights yeah. i was with swami hansanand ji one of the great teachers in rishikesh i used to serve him personally so one gentleman came to him swami ji when i sit for a meditation i start hearing the sounds and this old man he said raat ko dal kam khaya karo <laughs> <laughs> रात को दाल कम खाया करो <laughs> नहीं इट इज मैच्योरिटी स्पिरिचुअल प्रोग्रेस इज मार्क्ड विथ ओनली वन थिंग एंड दैट इज जॉय इन योर लाइफ इज ऑन एन इंक्रीजिंग स्केल because all that it means is now you have started understanding how to make your joy free from the bondage shri krishna says now know how to work how to execute your action work in a way where now your action is not going to increase your anxiety but your work is going to be a catalyst to decrease the anxiety to the point you reach where now you are capable of understanding what the teacher is speaking tatvamasi arrive to that to to that destination to that point and therefore shri krishna bhagwan is now giving you a plan of action a lot of people have always asked give us some practical tips you know we want some practical spirituality and that practical spirituality is not my creation it is coming from bhagwan krishna who brings it which is a reflection of the upanishads in gita bhagwan says yastvendriyani manasa niyamya rabhate arjuna karmendriyai karma yogam asaktas vishishyate amongst the people now we are not even considering a person who 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 refuses to recognize that action karma is our building block whether it is bhagavad gita or the upanishad it is not a philosophy meant to support some kind of laziness once hari baba one of our great you know saints from vrindavan not very i'm not talking about something that happened in satya yug <laughs> just about few few years ago hari baba had gone to meet one of the senior mahatmas in haridwar and this old man he was totally dilapidated he had become blind then hari baba said baba ashirwad dijiye bless me so this old man got up and he said are hari tu kab se alsi ho gaya re bless me hamara acha he said the old man got up and said since when have you become lazy please understand this is not meant so that you you know you become dull and lazy and the charm of your life is all lost but how do we work how do we work work all of you do and unless and until you were really people who are into the work you would not have been in this city this city demands people who are constantly kept on working like a bull 
I don't want to use any other. <laughs> kept on. You work a lot. Working a lot is not called as karma yoga. Working definitely there is action, but intelligent action is called as karma yoga. And what kind of intelligent action are you talking about? Not intelligent action so that you can subdue somebody else, push somebody down, crush someone and, and then you become that is called success. No, that may be your smart action, but we are not interested in that. We are interested in an action which can necessarily make a person, create a person who is now able to blossom and not remain in a shell of his shellfish existence. Yastvindriyani manasa niyamya rabhate rjuna karmendriya ih karma yogam asaktas vishishyate. Vishishyate means this karma yogi is way far superior. Vishishyate. He is superior. Superior to whom? Obviously, he is superior. We are not talking about he is superior to a lazy fellow. We are talking even about people who are there crazily into this, into this world of action. Then a normal karmi, the karma yogi vishishyate. How does the karma yogi work? He says, manasa niyamya, indriyani manasa niyamya. We have this set of, of, of the indriyas, of the organs, five organs of action and five organs of perception. Through your discrimination, through your power of discrimination, viveka, discipline these organs which means let there be this discretion what to do what not to do what to consume what not to consume just because it is brought to you does not mean that it has to be eaten by you just because something is given to you does not mean that you have to take it up once it so happened with Udiya Vavaji that there was this brahmachari Choteji along with him and uh, Though I'm talking about those days when Mahatmas, you know, um, really would live by the standards Tapon Maharaj lived. So some some rich devotee of Udiya Baba gifted a watch to this Brahmachari, and he was flashing it. Baba asked. Baba was totally like Tapon Maharaj, uh, <laughs> very stringent standards of. Uh, living with this passion. He asked, who gave you this? Why are you wearing? He says, uh, you know, somebody gave it. I didn't ask for it. Somebody gave it to me. If he was to just leave his wife, would you also take her up? Just because something is left given to you does not mean it has to be consumed. You, there is discrimination. When I am talking consumption, it means the organs of perception. To the discrimination of what to do, what not to do is about the organs of action. So, whether it is what you perceive, what you consume or what you do in this world, let not that be done out of your instincts out of your habits let that be let that be done through discrimination and that discrimination is called as viveka what is what what is appropriate for me to do and what is not as much as a person is able to bring the light of viveka in his life to that extent please know the person is refined to that extent, the person starts becoming sensitive to 
the subtler life that is available to you inside. To that extent that person is now able to find joy not in gross objects but he will be able to find joy in some subtle things of life and as a person starts progressing moving upwards becoming sensitive to that what is subtle sukshma now the person has become mature has become mature but how did that begin how did it happen it began by bringing the light of discrimination to the indriyas to both karmendriyas as well as the jnanendriyas karma indriya karma yogam and thus this is the way a karma yoga when is followed by a person what happens to him is sa vishishyate sa means he over here he is not to mean you know gender he he she whosoever vishishyate he rises he is superior over here this superiority that we are talking about is not something like you know a comparison or a comparative degree is used but this is not competition it is only to say well karma yoga i now i want to become karma yogi because i want to become better than you it is not becoming better than you it is becoming better than what you were there before you were an indiscriminative person before now you become discriminative it is it is not competition with anybody else you don't have to prove anything to anyone and those who think that i have to prove my spiritual realization to the world i think that is they are the most complicated people because they are attempting to prove something which is their idea of spirituality as a reality to someone uh, i'm because i'm able to see lights i'm superior to you you can be something may be wrong in your brain <laughs> you constantly keep on seeing lights where there are no lights strange things we do not agree subscribe to this at all at the end of it either you know brahman or you do not know brahman that is the only thing but in between if you say i am i am you know yeah. better than you going ahead because i am able to see lights hey you are having seeing those lights and things like that stop having what you have in the evening <laughs> all those lights are okay so this karma yogi now he has evolved and the way to evolution and that evolution means where now your joy is free for its expression where your joy is not submerged under your tensions under your small little squabbles your joy is not murdered by circumstances it is free how do we do that what is that karma yoga bhagwan explains it further and he says yajnarthat karmano nyatra loko yam karma bandhana tadartham karma kaunteya mukta sanga samachara i must tell you a confession you know these words of gita it is not unnecessarily called as geeta it is a poetry it is a song it is sweet it is sweet yajna arthat karmano nyatra loko yam karma bandhana when you are going to live in this world and also perform the action but when that action is not performed 
for Paramatma, I, we will come to that understanding, just understand the premise first. When the action is not performed for Paramatma, living in this world, acting in this world is only called as karma bandhanaha. There you are just a prisoner of your own karma. As a prisoner of your own karma, you are subjected to this dukkham, sukham and dukkham and that sukham also is not really sukham. What you call as sukham at, or you in the sense what we people call as sukham is only less dukkham. It is dukkham, but just because it is less dukkham, you call it sukham. It is such a pathological definition of sukham. Upanishad says, Yadvai bhuma tat sukham. We don't even have a healthy definition of what is happiness. Yeah, it is and therefore subjected to the karma bandhana. Karma bandhana obviously means that casting ourselves into this continuous stream of sukham, dukham and that again okay, sukham, dukham where, where there is dukham to oppose this sukham, it means less dukham and more dukham, less dukham and more dukham. Because that what is truly called as sukham does not have any, any antonym, any opposite. That sukham is sukham, it is absolute. It does not have and therefore in Upanishad we do not find that God has, the word God has any opposite. People come and say God is all goodness and therefore there is another opposite of God which is all badness. Hey, there is nothing like that. If there is anything else to cancel God, how can that be God? Because it is not absolute. If there is any other power, if there is any other element to cancel, nullify, how can that be absolute? And if your God is not absolute and that what is relative is called as God, why call it even God? Because according to a mosquito, you are big, relatively big. And for you an elephant is big, for an elephant the whale is big, for a whale the ocean is big, for the ocean earth is big. If a mosquito decides to call you God, <laughs> that's mosquito's definition of God. That does not make you God just because a mosquito has decided to call you God. It is a relative definition. If it becomes relative, why call it God at all? That what is atyantikam, absolute, parmarthikam, only will we come to an agreement that this can be called as God. Just because it is somebody's theology, <laughs> we don't have to be so sympathetic that we become we, we, we accept erroneous definitions. And so, over here, Yajnarthat Karmanunyatra, when your action is done for Paramatma, then that action does not become a karma bandhana. Bandhana means a bondage. So, one form of bondage is in form where you are, you are cast into life after life of Sukham and Dukham. True? The other form of Karma Bandhanam is where you live with remorse, regrets of opportunities lost or having done something that you should not have had done. Now your life is full of, you know, that closet with skeletons. Don't pull it out. Gade murde matu khado. Keep it closed. <coughs> and the world is such all around us, everybody of us, that you try to hide, the other fellow is going to dig it out. We may want to hide it, but everybody else is there waiting to 
waiting for an opportunity to sniff it out. And therefore, all your life will be spent only playing this game of hide and seek. One of, one of the, uh, you know, it was conversations that I had with Pujya Gurudev. I had asked, I, I was just in college then and I had asked Guru, Gurudev for his permission to, you know, later on this Amar Chitra Katha came up with those uh, pictorial description of his life, biography. I had asked him there then that Gurudev, can I do this? And Pujya Gurudev said, first, you know, basically because I was not able to talk to him, I was so scared to talk to him there then. <laughs> And I was scared to him, not because it was Gurudev, because he, just before me, he had scolded someone so badly. <laughs> Those who have known him and seen him would know what was the fun, what fire it was. And uh, so I asked him, can I do that? And, you know, what he said was, do what you want. My life is an open book. How many of us can say that there is nothing to hide? Even if it is bad, put it up. I have nothing to lose. No remorse, no regret. Lokoyam karma bandhanaha. And if you do not live the life by the standards of, of this karma yoga, what comes to you? is your lot would be only just this playing playing hide and seek having some remorse having some regret why did i do that and why did i not do something what i was supposed to do so here he says yajnarthat karmano nyatra loko yam karma bandhanaha tadartham karma kaunteya mukta sanga samachara live this life of karma yoga understanding i'll just put it up in you know a capsule for you and that is now let your every action become a worship of parmatma don't say that you are doing something or you are doing your job so that you can have a security so that you can just maintain your position. You are doing something because you want little money. This is too small. Itne bhi bikao mat bano. You are doing what you are doing, what you are supposed to do. The righteous action is meant so that it ultimately reaches. This is my prayer. My prayer is in form of my action. Because actions speak louder than words. And if I want me to be heard by Paramatma, let my actions speak for me. This is my way of worshipping him. The righteous action, action which has sprung through your discrimination is now the worship of Paramatma. When you start understanding this, bring first, let the discrimination come in your life. And then let this action which has come from discrimination now become your offering to Ishwara. Yajnarthat karmano nyatra loko yam karma bandhanaha otherwise what we will be creating is only prisons for us to live. And nobody who is in a prison ever can be happy. Prisons in USA are very good. <laughs> or here also I was once taken to see meet some people here I tell you better you have to see Indian prisons to know oh foreign mein hai kya karta hai hai jail mein baita hai bada achha hai kya khana milta hai hai AC hai safai hai rena hai ho kya baat karte ho Prison for no one, no matter how nice and beautiful that prison may be. Prison is a prison. And therefore, learn to walk towards this freedom and not create prison 
द प्रीजन ऑफ कर्म बंधन एंड दस भगवान श्री कृष्ण एंड इन सेंग मयि सर्वाणि कर्माणि सन्यस्याध्यात्म चेतसा निराशिर निर्ममो भूत्वा युद्धस्व विगत ज्वर अर्जुन फाइट योर बैटल नाउ एंड हाउ वुड यू फाइट फाइट इट विदाउट एंगजाइटी ज्वर मीन्स डिसीज डोंट एक्ट इन दिस वर्ल्ड with a pathological condition under under some 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 sort of illness sickness work in this is the way to work walk towards it how mai mai means to me now he declares to ishwara all the karmani sanyasya offering them to ishwara adhyatma chetasa adhyatma chetasa means keep your mind focused on one fact and that is that at the end of your life you want to discover that fulfillment you want to stand at the same peak where this brahmajnani is standing where my teacher is standing i want to see the same that what my teacher has seen that what shri krishna sees that what the rishis are able to see I don't want to die crying, crying, getting scared. Doctor, don't give me injections. Bring me more injections. Babu ji, kya akhir ki chaay ek pakoda aur? Hey, ye yeah, aise nahi marna hume. <coughs> I want to find that I am fulfilled. Adhyatma chetasa. Let that be your goal. Let that be your destination. Nirashir nirmamo bhutva yudhyasva vigata jvaraha. Fight. fight your battle giving up all the sickness discrimination and then find that your actions are actions of worship why because ultimately you have your destination is that when these three things are there with you you will find the toxicity of this anxiety of that suffering of that misery that we are constantly glorifying it will it will start evaporating it will start going away and this is available to you and therefore uddhared atmanatmanam help yourself nobody else you help yourself and if you can help yourself only then can you be of any help to the world before that <laughs> you are only seeking someone's help all right so this is what bhagavad gita and bhagwan shri krishna shows us this is the vision of vedant this is the vision of the rishis this is the vision of upanishad of the ved if we are able to muster ourselves to it and sooner or later or right from now if you make the resolution you already have started walking that path now just increase your intensity and move further don't delay there is no point in delaying thank you very much ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्ण मुदच्यत पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यत वंदे भगवत पुनःपुन ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्तिद विभागि व्योमद्याप्तहाय दक्षिणमूर्त नम ओ थैंक यू ऑल